All right, let's go to the Boardwalk on the Hotline now and talk with John Dorambos here. Uh, he's going to be in town uh, at the uh, Margate JCC, and uh, he'll tell us a little bit more about that and some other things. It's been quite uh, a roller coaster ride for Mr. Dorambos. You know, we used to host the show together over there at uh, Chickies and Pete's. You know, one time, uh, we'll tell you more about that in here in a little bit. But he joins us now on the Boardwalk on the Hotline. John, welcome back, man. How you been? Dude, when you're going to quote the Chicken and Peace show, you're going back a long time, man. I am. You know, I just came up the other day. I don't know if you remember. We had you on the show, and then we had uh, a guy that was in your wedding call in, and you didn't even know who it was. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're bringing back some memories, man. Yeah. That was uh, that had to be eight eight years ago or so. We were there. We were playing At like, uh, you know, we were doing a little thing. The guy called in and uh, he said, I was in your wedding. You couldn't you couldn't identify the man who was in your wedding party. Or were you in his so wedding? Was it was it the other way around? Yeah, I, you know what? I forgot, but I, I remember just I, I didn't know who it was. And then even now, looking back, I don't know if I could. I, I forgot who called. That's right. I don't. Well, I don't remember the guy who called. In fact, the guy who used to host the show with me at that time, he's no longer here either. But I was talking to that guy the other day, and he brought the guy up. He was filming something up in Toronto or something. He said, you remember that guy? He called into Dorambos when he was on the show. I said, yeah. And then here, sure enough, I said, you know, Dorambos is coming to Margate uh, to be a part of this Cats JCC sports night. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm super stoked. It's Thursday uh, on the 16th at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to do a sponsor meet and greet at 6.30. Uh, you know, it benefits the Cats JCC Children's Scholarship Fund, which, uh, you know, ultimately will benefit the Early Childhood Center and camp program. So, uh, you know, the Hirsch boys have been great to me for a long, long time. Uh, they're heavily involved in this. And so to be able to do my part, we're going to perform. We're going to do a meet and greet. I'll hang out afterwards. Uh, you can get tickets at jccatlantic.org or call. And, and everybody, come on, get your pens out. Write this down right now. 609 822 one one six seven extension zero. Just hit the operator or jccatlantic.org. It's all going to go to a great cause. We're going to have a great time for sports night. You'll see me there on the uh, on August sixteenth. So I hope you guys show up. Yeah, that's uh, in the uh, Thursday night, the sixteenth. Uh, John will be there. They've had great sports nights, by the way. Joe Theismann was there. I think Sugar Ray Leonard was the guest last year, and uh, John Dornbos. Now. I know the last year, I mean, has been just a crazy year for you. I mean, you were here, then you were traded, and then you had an unbelievable uh, situation come up, and then, you you know, obviously you didn't play last year, and then you get the uh, uh, the whole thing with uh, America's Got Talent. I mean, it's been a crazy year for you. Well, you know, what? it's one of those things where, you know, I did America's Got Talent, and had, had I won, I probably would have played that season out and then probably retired, uh, and ultimately I didn't win. And so I didn't retire. I signed a three-year extension, and then ultimately I got traded to the Orleans Saints. And I tell myself I was traded to New Orleans to be saved by a Saints. So they discovered I had a six-centimeter aneurysm in my upper aorta. Wow. You know, so ten and a, ten and a half hour surgery. Um, and and uh, let me tell you, that, that this has by far been the hardest thing I've, I've been going through. And uh, Now, not to name drop, but this is cool. You know, I, I, there's a movie called Just Go, uh, Just Go with, it with Adam Sandler and uh, Jennifer Aniston. And, you know, he's like, oh, how, what about buying a cheeseburger from uh, – uh, whatever, it doesn't matter what that quote is, but here's what's cool. So I'm in the green room at Allen, and Garth Brooks comes up to me, and he kind of knew the America's Got Talent situation, and had I won, what would have happened? And he said, hey, man, when I first met you, you told me your favorite song was, you know, Unanswered Prayers. You know, at, at a moment when you think you want something and it doesn't go your way, just it's all good. Just sit tight because probably something better is in line for you. And sure enough, had I won, guess what? I would have never had the physical, and I'd be dead. So... I'm super happy that, that things worked out the way they did. I'm alive, and, uh, you know, it's all good, man. Yeah, it's all good. John wow. Doran, boss, with us story, on the man. Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Now, John, Mike talks about doing the show with you at Chickies and Pete's. I filled in one time at Borgata for you, and Tim Mooney said, John's got to be on the road. You were going to, like, loop in via – I don't even know if Skype existed at that point when I – but uh, I couldn't fill your shoes, buddy. I did my best for that charity night. But uh, uh, I love it. I, it's a we share a connection in that way, too, that – you and I uh, were part of that Tim Mooney program, and I know you're close with yeah. Tim. How about getting that Super Bowl ring, though, and the Eagles to do that for you? I mean, that, that's got to be pretty special. You know, what's cool is, uh, you know, the Lurie, you know, Mr. Lurie and, and obviously the entire organization, uh, you know, they said, hey, look, you were here a long time and you helped set the culture. Um, you know, the Super Bowl for you is, is life, and, and your ring is for showing up. And, you know, I got the longest consecutive game winning streak, which is cool, and, you know, I, I didn't do that for the record. I just did it for my teammates and, and the fans. And I'll never forget a Brian Dawkins quote. 
you know, he said he played every play as if he were a fan. And, uh, you know, not only that, but if he was a fan that was injured and only could play one play, you know, if you told any fan that's an Eagles fan, hey, you're going to have a separated shoulder, but we're going to let you run down on kickoff one time in a game, <laughs> every one of them is going to say yes. And that's how Dawkins played. So, um, you know, it, it was an honor. Uh, and they said this ring is, is for kind of who you were for the last 12 years and, and to celebrate just being alive. So um, it's really cool, man. I, I never thought I'd win – a Super Bowl unless I played. Uh, and Jeff even told me that. He goes, I know you told me that, you know, you're probably only going to get one as a player because you weren't really going to get into coaching. Well, guess what? You might have not played this year, but you're part of our family forever, and this is yours, and I, I lost it, man. So it was much more symbolic than necessarily just being a direct correlation of, of just the game and the ring, if you will. We're spending some time with John Dornboss. He's going to have football magic and inspiration to the Cats JCC Sports Night. That's Thursday, August 16th over there in Margate, right on Jerome Avenue. So, John, where, where are you right now with what you're doing? Because uh, I saw a billboard coming on the other side of the vault the other day, and your big bug was looking at me. So uh, I was like, all right, there's Dornboss going to be there. He's going to be in Margate. Like, where are you based out of? What are you doing with your time? And will you always be a Philadelphian? Well, so I, I live in Southern California, so I was, uh, um, that's kind of home to me. And every offseason, I came out to Southern California and Huntington Beach. So we live there. Uh, you know, we're performing a lot. I love it. Um, you know, we'll be at Sugar House, and then we'll be at Easton and Lancaster and starting to do some really nice theaters. Um, and right now, actually, you, you asked where am I literally right now. I'm in an RV in a parking lot driving up to Vail, Colorado with my wife. Uh, and I'm speaking to a company in Vail, and then her and I are going to spend a, a week and a half and just cruise around the mountains of Colorado together with our dog. Wow. Uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, the the stuff with the America's Got Talent, everybody was kind of following you there. Then you said you ended up getting traded. Uh, and then, you know, the Eagles win the Super Bowl. You come back. Lori brings you in. And now you're kind of doing something. Like, did, is this something that you envisioned that you would be doing? You know, kind of traveling all over, speaking and, and performing all over like this. Is this where you saw your life where it would be right now? Yeah, you know, every offseason, well, I, I love performing. And every offseason, that's what I did. You know, some guys, they take it off, and some guys play video games and wh whatever. Me, I, I just went back to work because I figured the team was going to get rid of me. So every offseason, I'd go perform and try and set that next life up. And I kid you not, April would come around, and I'd be like, holy cow, I'm still on this team. i got to book a ticket. i got a team meeting in like a week. <laughs> and so sure enough, 14, 15 years went by, right? And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, if there's anything that I'm proud of, is that it's it being able to, to leverage the NFL and the relationships to set a life up after football. Because it doesn't matter if it's one year, two years, or 15 years. You know, if, if, if you live a great life and you live to your 80s or 90s, that's a long time to entertain your mind. You know, I've, uh, you know a, a Mooney quote right here, man, you're going to make money, you're going to spend money, you're going to win money, you're going to lose money, but you're never going to get your time back. And yeah. so a, a, a lot of guys suffer with identity crisis and purpose when they're done playing after the NFL because everything they had went into it. Yeah. You know, where, you know, right now it's funny. I'm sitting on a curb in a parking lot at Lazy Dog and in Vail, and I'm just like, man, I'm looking at a, I'm looking at an RV, and this is the first time in 25 years I haven't been in a training camp. Pretty crazy and, uh, that uh, the season starts tonight, right? Season starts tonight, yeah. and uh, the Eagles obviously start a week from tonight, and uh, you will not be in training camp. And obviously uh, you will be locally, you know, you'll be here in a couple of weeks, but you're doing – uh, you know, so the America's Got Talent really took off for you. Did you just get, like, bombarded with people trying to get you to perform after that? Yeah, but you know what? Uh, yeah, but then I went right into the season, and then I put all this stuff for the off season, and uh, I, I got announced in December in a game, and, and they put it on the big screen and said, congratulations, John Dornboss, for tying Harold Carmichael's most consecutive games ever played with 162. <laughs> Well, that very next play, I dislocated the wrist, wow. three surgeries, and that was the last game I ever played as an Eagle. So I tied the record, but now all of a sudden I had all these shows booked, right? I'm one-handed, which is a magician is tough. <laughs> so we we kind of had to postpone a few things, and then I got healthy, and then, uh, you know, football started back up. And, and really for me, you know, America's Got Talent was amazing, but Ellen DeGeneres has been a, a savior. And, and the opportunity that she's given me on her show and – uh, the support on the back end and just believing in me and kind of, you know, her, what, what her and I stand for. And that's literally just be kind to one another and let's have yeah. a good time. So all what? that combined, uh, I, I love the speaking business. Like it's, 
I get to perform and I get to tell a story, which is really, really cool. And, you know, we're just taking it day by day, man. I know that's kind of a long-winded answer. Well, which I can vouch for. And by the way, in seeing you perform on just a small scale, I mean, this is what made, you know, John such a unique, you know, human being is that we're at Chickies and Pete's out in Egg Harbor Township. We used to do this show and the crowd would come to see him. And afterwards, he, he would stay there and right. do his, you know, perform some magic. And this place would just be bewildered by probably, you know, stuff that you do second nature. And, and they were just unbelievably bewildered about how, you know, you were able to do this and just entertain this crowd on just like, boom, split second notice. Just say, hey, is everybody, you know, I always felt that was just such a cool thing that you always did. Well, and, and, but that's what I love. You know, a buddy of mine's a musician, and uh, he's like, man, some of the best shows that you'll ever do. I don't care if it's, if you do arenas. I don't care if you do stadiums. Some of your best performances are going to be impromptu in backyards, and it's going to be unbelievable. And so those are the performances I love. I, look, I, I love magic because every time I do something, I think about all the years of practice that it took. I think about when I was in a bad place in my life as a kid, what it brought to me in that moment. Yeah. And, and those are the kind of the laughter and the experiences that you try and share. But every time you do that, you give that to somebody else, you kind of reflect on where you come from and, and how thankful you are to be where you're at. And to me, that's, that's cool, man. That, that's really, really cool. Uh, he will be at the fourth annual uh, Jackie and Hank Herskowitz Sports Night fundraising event Thursday the 16th at the Cats JCC, 501 North Jerome Avenue, Margate, 609-822. 1167, extension 159, jccatlantic.org for uh, information and tickets. And John will be there. And I texted my buddy. I tried to get that name by the time we were finished this conversation, but he has it. He's in California, too, so he's not Right, Johnson Bale, the buddies uh, in California. Everybody's uh, – give uh, our best uh, day, Annalise, too, John, and, and, uh, I love you. Uh, and, and all the people that you're traveling with. We think it's great. We look forward to seeing you out here, my friend. By the way, John, are you really missing good. not being at training camp? Um, <laughs> yes and no. Right. <laughs> you know what it is? You, you get to an age where you're like, I, I miss the guys. I, you know what? I, I miss the competition. I miss, you know, being really good at, you know, being really great at something and just going with, you know, I, I miss Donnie Jones. I, I miss working with him. Yeah. But I, I don't miss hurting. I don't miss being sore. I don't miss, you know what I mean? I, I kind of got to a point there where it was like, okay, surgeries are starting to happen. It just. Right. And by know, the way, for the people who. years of. The people who um, maybe don't remember our first shows together back then, you told the story that you really shouldn't even have been in college football, <laughs> right? I remember you with the fake tape. Yeah. But, well, so so long story short, I basically <laughs> took three teammates and I put an ultra highlight tape together. And that's, you know, for the for the older crowd listening, that's when you have the VHS and play, pause, record, the cable in the back, and you have the fuzz between each clip and no HD cameras. Uh, me, Nick Heinley, and Tim Thurman. And I, I got a full ride because they – basically thought I was Tim Thurman, and Tim Thurman <laughs> was a long, he was a 6'6 long snapper that's better than than I'll ever be. And uh, that got me into college, and then, uh, you know, I played three years there, and, and hey, the rest is history. So, um, But, you know, what's funny is I also came out when snapping wasn't such a uh, kind of a popular choice. Yeah. You know, so had I come out now as good as I was then, I would have never made it because the snappers now are so much better coming out than I was. It just so happens that I – was better than what was available at the time, I guess. Well, uh, you're one of a kind, John, and we appreciate you stopping by and giving us a couple minutes. Uh, he'll be in town on the 16th of August at the Cats JCC. One more time, 822-1167 uh, for tickets and information. John, thanks you so much. Thanks, guys.